Hey, what's up guys? Alex here. I'm back again for another video today and I, um, I wanted to go back to a series that I started uh, a long ways back now, uh, a long time ago. It must have been probably eight or nine months ago, kind of in the first half. First few months of last year, I probably started this series. Um, I believe it was around the time of my hundredth video, so yeah, it must have been close to a year ago now. I started a, a series um, where basically I wanted to list um, my top 10 or top 15 Bob Dylan songs of each decade, starting in the 60s of course and working my way through the 70s, 80s, 90s and 2000s and um, yeah I did that first video, the, the top 15 Bob Dylan songs of the 1960s um, which you can check out on my channel and I thought I would at long last carry on with the series today, make the second instalment, which is my favourite Dylan songs of the 1970s, which uh, which would be a bit of fun. Um, just made a simple list here. I'm only going to do a top 10 for the 70s because I, it wasn't quite as kind of prolific in terms of songwriting and, and output for Dylan in the 70s as it was in the 60s. You know, most people know Bob Dylan for his 60s work, you know, his classic albums, the mid-60s trilogy, his early folk albums, and the later 60s stuff. Um, the 70s was still a great decade for Dylan, don't get me wrong, you know, like, he released probably three or four great albums and one or two masterpieces in the 70s, so it's definitely worth making this list, but I thought I'd only do a, a top 10 uh, as opposed to a top 15. So yeah, just going to run down my uh, my top 10 Dylan songs of the of the 70s. So uh, just going to open with some kind of honourable mentions, some songs which didn't quite make the list, um, starting with Lily, Rosemary and the Jack of Hearts, which is one of the longest songs Dylan ever wrote, um, definitely one of the longest songs he wrote in the 70s. Uh, this is what, a song from Blood on the Tracks, and I love this song. It's um, one of Dylan's best kind of storytelling songs. You know, it's, it's, it's kind of about this love triangle and he kind of makes it very obscure and abstract by bringing in these kind of literary um, characters and these kind of well-known characters and personas, bringing them into this kind of story. But you always get the sense that he's kind of got his own personal attachment to this story as well. So that's a great song. Second honourable mention is Day of the Locusts, which is a song of uh, New Morning. Again, great song. Um... It's actually about Dylan graduating with a, I think, a master's in, in something that he obtained from a university in Dakota in the late 60s, and it's kind of about that day. It's a great song, didn't quite make the top 10, but great song from New Morning. And the third one is Nobody, Nobody Except You, or Nobody Except You, which is not actually a song that appeared on any of his 70s albums. This is an outtake, I think, from the Planet Wave sessions, um, or maybe the New Morning sessions, but I believe it's uh, an outtake from from the uh, Planet Wave sessions or the Blood on the Track sessions. And yeah, it's a great song. It's on um, Bootleg Series Volume 1 to 3 from 91, so check it out. One of the best, um, most heartfelt, emotive songs that Dylan wrote in his career. Love this song. I wish, I really wish they'd put this on Planet Waves. It would have made the album so much better in my opinion. I just, I just love this song. Check it out if you haven't. So uh, yeah, those are just three honourable mentions. Um, and now I'll get into the top ten. So at number ten, we have uh, my favourite song from Dylan's 1974 album, Planet Waves which I just mentioned, and the song is Going, Going, Gone, which I think is the third track on the album, or second track on the album, I think it's the second track on the album, and Planet Waves, by the way, is playing in the background, um, but yeah, Going, Going, Gone, my favourite song from Planet Waves, um, I remember Adam Nichols talking about this in his review of Planet Waves, and I completely agree with everything Adam said, um, basically he thought the song was about kind of somebody coming towards the end of their life and, and taking their own life through, obviously, suicide. And um, with that in mind, it makes it a very dark, very brooding, very harrowing song to listen to. Um, probably more so than any other track on Planet Waves. I've never been a massive fan of Planet Waves. I'd probably put it third or fourth in terms of my favourite Dylan albums of the 70s. 
Um, but maybe it's just overshadowed by obviously Blood on the Tracks and Desire, which came directly after this album. But, you know, songs like Going, Going, Gone are definitely vintage Dylan. You know, he's just, um, you know, these lines are really, really, they're coming from a very a dark and creative place. And yeah, I just love the song. I think it's, it's definitely well placed on the album. And um, that's why it made the top 10. At number nine, we have uh, the closing track from Dylan's 1976 album, Desire. And the song is Sarah, which of course refers to his then wife, uh, Sarah Lowndes, who um, married Dylan in 1967, uh, sorry, 1965, uh, late 1965, and um, spent 12 years with him. Uh, They were married for 12 years. They finally got divorced, I think, in 1977. Of course, there was much made of Dylan's um, marital struggles and problems throughout the 70s. You know, he wrote arguably the whole of Blood on the Tracks about Sarah and about his marriage. And then, you know, the final closing heartbreaking track on Desire is titled Sarah. And it's just so goddamn honest. That's what I love so much about this song. You know, it's I've never heard Dylan so stripped back, so exposed emotionally as I as I hear him on on Sarah. And it's just this. Again, very dark, harrowing, um, you know, the, the melody is, is very, very kind of melancholy and uh, Dylan's singing, you know, from obviously a very, very um, dark and, and, and kind of painful place. And I love this song. Again, as I say, I think it's, it's one of the most honest songs he ever wrote. You know, a lot of the time he was very abstract and very, um, you know, very mysterious, um, but you know this song he's uh, he's singing from the heart and it's uh, it's touching to listen to um because you know it's it's true so um yeah number 9 is sarah uh number 8 we have you're going to make me lonesome when you go which is one of the middle tracks from uh, blood on the tracks of course from 1975 my favorite album of the uh, 1970s and uh, you're going to see many more songs from uh, blood on the tracks on this list you're going to make me lonesome when you go is um, kind of the oddball on Blood on the Tracks. It's one of those tracks which doesn't really um, fit with the other tracks on the album in terms of tone. Uh, this song is is much more kind of uh, optimistic in a way, even though obviously the message is, is somebody leaving him. Um, it's got this kind of optimistic, kind of uplifting tone to it, and the melody is quite... A little bit faster than some of the early songs, so it's um, it's a nice break from some of the more deep and dense stuff that, that appears on the, the early parts of the album. But it's a great song, you know. Dylan definitely um, wrote some great lyrics on here. The lyrics are obviously again quite heartbreaking, and it's about losing somebody you love, and um, arguably it's about Sarah. But I actually heard this song isn't is rumored not to be about Sarah and about somebody else that he was maybe having an affair with, but don't quote me on that. I'm not sure whether that's there's any truth to that, but I think, you know, there was um, some speculation at the time that this was written about another woman in his life. Um, but yeah, great song, um, some great lines on there, and definitely worthy of making my top ten. Number seven, we have "Time Passes Slowly," which is um, my favorite track from the first album he released in the seventies. No, wait, second album he released in the 70s after Self Portrait. Um, New Morning. This is New Morning. Uh, This is my favourite song from New Morning. Time passes slowly. Great song. I mean, it's uh, a very, very simple song. There's not much to it, but that's kind of what I love about it because so much of Dylan's material is is very dense, as I said, and very hard to decode, and it's often very abstract. Time passes slowly. Songs like this are very very simple stripped back but still have still pack kind of an emotional punch and i love some of the alternate versions of this song that appeared on the another side of self-portrait um is that what it was called um the bootleg that came out last year some great alternate versions and you can tell dylan was quite close to this song because he was he did many takes of it and i think it's a great song just kind of um a simple message a simple sentiment but very nice song, so that's number seven. At number six, we have the second track from um, Blood on the Tracks from 1975, Simple Twist of Fate. And uh, this track fits really nicely into the album for me. 
I mean, you've got the very chaotic, kind of heavy um, openness of the album, Tangled Up in Blue. And then it transitions into this very slow, moody, um, introspective song, Simple Twist of Fate, which is um, one of the slower songs from the album, but it's definitely still got a very distinctive power to it. It's still very hard hitting. And of course, the overtones are of heartbreak and um, pain, but at the same time, kind of like you're not you're going to make me lonesome when you go there's kind of an acceptance here from Dylan there's kind of a um a sense of perspective and a sense of you know this this has to happen and this has happened um and obviously the the message of the song is that you know you can't really predict the future anything can happen any day of your life and it's it just ends up being a, a simple twist of fate and um obviously he's tying it to to love and his relationships but um you know, I think it kind of applies in a broader context. And I love this song. It's one of my favorites from the album. And uh, I think it it's one of the, the great tracks that Dylan wrote in the, the 1970s. So that's number six. Uh, and number five, we have Hurricane, which, of course, is the majestic opener to uh, Desire from 1976. Uh, this is an amazing song. I mean, I don't need to say too much about this because everybody loves Hurricane. Um, or well, most people, most Dylan fans can appreciate Hurricane. Uh, it's one of those songs which has those political overtones. Um, obviously a very, um, very obvious message. This song, Dylan writing about the, the boxer, Reuben Hurricane Carter, who was convicted of, um, was it one murder or two murders? I'm not entirely sure, but was convicted of murder in the... 60s I believe and was wrongly convicted obviously he was proved to be innocent in the end I believe and uh, Dylan saw this as a massive injustice and um, kind of harking back to the early days when he was writing these these very topical heavy topical songs um, he called them one-dimensional songs I would have to argue with that I don't think they were one-dimensional um, but yeah he's harking back to the early days writing these politically driven songs and Hurricane is an example of that but I think here in the 70s he's he knows the formula he knows how to write these songs and he's flashing it out and it's just a an amazing whirlwind roller coaster ride listening to this song it's it's quite something and um, you know some loaded lines in here some really kind of finger pointing type lines and um, you know Dylan's being very 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 upfront and honest with his feelings about the case and Got to admire him for that. So, Hurricane is is at number five. And number four, we have uh, the only song I've included in this list that ke that comes after Desire. Uh, this is from the album Slow Train Coming from 1979, um, the first album in Dylan's um, religious trilogy, um, his Born Again Christian trilogy, which came at the end of the 70s and early 80s. The song is Precious Angel, which is the second song on the album, and I love this song. I don't know whether everybody who's a Dylan fan will love this song, and I don't love it for the traditional reason of, you know, what it's trying to say. I don't love it for the message of the song, because obviously it's a very evangelical type um, type song, and, and Dylan's singing about Christianity and, and, and being born again, and, and he's he's being very evangelical at times on this album and many people disliked that many people thought it was going against the grain of everything that made Dylan great I don't agree I think you can read more into these songs I think they have um, more of an emotional impact than that on on me specifically um, and this song is is beautiful it's it's got a great melody it's produced really well um, by Jerry Wexler and Dylan singing these lines and you can tell how much he, he means um, by these lines, by just how he's singing them. I think he gives an amazing vocal delivery on this song. And the lyrics to me are really touching. And I don't think you have to confine them to religion to find them to find them touching or to find them um, impactful. I think they can be, you know, they can be great lyrics on their own. And uh, great song, very underrated album, in my opinion. It's definitely not, you know, one of the best he ever wrote, but um, he ever put together, should I say. But uh, it's it's certainly one of my favourites of the 70s, and um, this is my favourite song from the album. So, Precious Angel at number four.
So number three, we have another track from Desire from 1976. And this just about beats Hurricane as being my favourite song on the album. Uh, only just about, but I think this song is just slightly better. Um, and number three, we have Isis, which is an incredible song. Uh, I've always loved the live renditions that Dylan did of this song um, at the, the Rolling Thunder Review in the mid-70s. If you haven't checked out the live performances of this, I would highly recommend it. It's one of his best live performances ever, in my opinion. Um, you know, on record, it's amazing as well. Uh, definitely got a bit of a different flavour in the studio as opposed to um, when he played this live. Um, but yeah, I mean, this song is just lyrically excellent. I think it's vintage Dylan in terms of in terms of lyricism. You know, he's he's kind of writing some very abstract, mysterious, and and quite metaphorical type lyrics here. Kind of reminds me of kind of mid-60s Dylan, kind of blonde on blonde era Dylan. And um, it's amazing to see that he still had the capacity to, to write songs like this in the mid-70s. And yeah, it's just incredible. It's got a very hard-hitting, um, attention-grabbing melody as well. And the song kind of builds to a kind of lyrical crescendo, I guess you could say. It kind of starts off quite slow and mysterious and, and builds to be this very... Um, revealing um, kind of story type song and yeah I can't say anything more about this song I just I just love it from start to finish and as I say go and check out the live versions if you were uh, if you haven't because they just blow me away completely moving into the top two now at number two we have um, one of Dylan's undisputed masterpieces uh, you know, everybody seems to love this song and it's one of his most highly regarded popular songs of his whole career and um, there's very good reason for that. Number two, we have the majestic opener, of course, from Blood on the Tracks, um, Tangled Up in Blue. What do I need to say about this song? You guys have probably heard it and I suspect that most of you love it as much as I do. But I mean, yeah, this song is, is, is incredible. I mean, very, very heartbreaking. It's the opener to one of his greatest albums so I think he he had to kind of make an entrance and this song definitely does a very good job of doing that. He's uh, kind of establishing the, the context and establishing the scene of what's going to follow on this album um, and again he's being very upfront, very bitter and very um, very honest about his feelings on this song, um, talking in depth about kind of the heartbreak he's feeling and um, again, kind of telling a, a kind of chronological story of um, of his relationship, which is kind of a running theme on many of the tracks on this album. Um, there's some great stories on there, but uh, I think this track is is beyond a story. It's also very well put together. It's very clever in the way that it was written. You know, Dylan's using uh, his use of kind of first and third person on here is is genius. Uh, it's a technique that he learned from somebody that was close to him, I believe, in the early 70s. And here we hear it kind of applied to a, a Dylan song, and I think it just adds to the overall kind of depth of the song, and just adds an extra dimension and um, makes it into something that's truly, truly special to listen to. So, yeah, give this, uh, give this song a listen if you haven't. It's one of his best songs. And if you can, um, check out the, actually I'll put this in the description, the live version of this, uh, which again was done at the Rolling Thunder Review. I believe you can watch it on his official Vivo page. Um, and again, it's one of the greatest uh, live performances of any Dylan song I've ever seen. Just uh, someone filmed it as well, and it's like a close-up of his face, and he's got this kind of white face on, he's got this huge hat on and these kind of piercing blue eyes, and it's it's just so powerful, so impactful, the way he's singing this, um, this, this amazing song, so definitely go and check that out. But yeah, number two had to be, uh, had to be the, the amazing Tangled Up in Blue, great song. And at number one, we have another song from uh, Blood on the Tracks. I had to put this in number one, it's always been my favorite Dylan song of the 70s. And at number one, we have Idiot Wind, which, um, again, kind of similar to Tangled Up in Blue in the fact that it's it's kind of more than a story song, but it does 
at the same time tell a very relevant and very harrowing story about um obviously about his relationship and this is one of the most bitter um kind of nasty songs I've probably ever heard even though Dylan kind of has a reputation for writing nasty songs you know even going back to the 60s with Positively Fourth Street and uh you know Bad of a Thin Man and those type of songs this is kind of in the same vein but I'd say kind of another level of um bitterness another level of, of kind of nastiness and yeah Dylan again just pouring out his heart about um about this relationship that's kind of crumbling, um, you know, beneath his feet. And it's just one of those, one of those songs you just listen to. And, and at the end of it, you kind of have to take a breather. You have to kind of step back and take stock of what you just heard. And so many kind of loaded lines in here, so much, um, finger pointing going on. Um, obviously he never actually reveals, um, kind of the true nature of the relationship he's talking about. Um, so it's got that element of mystique, but it's still quite obvious that it's it's a, a very heartbreaking moment for him, and he's just laying everything on the line. He's he's not holding anything back here. He's just telling people exactly how he feels and putting it in a very Dylan esque type um, type way. And lyrically, one of the best songs he ever wrote, um, no doubt. And melodically, it's again kind of kind of a crescendo it's it's kind of a bit slower at the start and builds to a kind of climax later in the song and um it's a long song you know there's a lot to kind of chew on on this song it, it takes i think eight or nine minutes in total to listen to but it's just it's just amazing it's just uh, an incredible song and i had to put it at number one because it's it's always been always been my favorite dylan song of the 70s so that uh that concludes the list, guys. Um, Idiot Wins at number one, and that's my top ten Dylan songs of the 70s. Um, sorry about rambling on again. Just seems to be something I do nowadays, especially when talking about an artist like Dylan. Can't can't resist. So uh, that's my list. Let me know in the comments uh, some of your favourite Dylan songs of uh, of the 1970s, and. Um, yeah, thank you very much for watching. I'll have another vinyl update up shortly because I've bought a few more records since since doing my last one a few days ago, so stay tuned for that. But in the meantime, thank you very much for watching and I'll see you next time.